Welcome back. Towards the end of the previous part, Angel here basically pointed out that it was premeditated murder. So uh, may may maybe we shouldn't try and poke holes in that. So let's see here with her testimony. Lana Skye intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Oh my. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So if I ordered a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Hmm. Angel's deduction. We'll go for it one more time. Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. Alright. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine uh, to plunge the knife in again and again. Let's see here. So what we got, because anything I think of is like, maybe the, the again and again is going to be something at fault. Yeah, one knife wound. One knife wound. It's not again and again, is it? Objection! You say she stabbed him again and again. But you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moss surprise. I'm afraid the moss is... Growing under our feet as we wait, mister. What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Ah, ah, you're right. Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. Even even though it was... I need to cough, hold on. Sorry about that. As I was trying to say, it's like, good show, Mr. Edgeworth. It's like, it's, it's, it's Phoenix that got it. What a hunk. He's my hero, really. What about my objection? No one noticed? Well, witness. You got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. What? Now tell us how you saw... how you saw that... you thought... what? Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. A red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly, ghastly the whole scene was. Muffler? Hold on a minute. What we got here? It's like, she didn't seem to have a muffler in that one. Do I not have that? Oh, the, oh, the other one's just like conjecture, isn't it? Alright, so, yeah, it, it's, it's this, because if we have a look here, she's not got a muffler on. So, that's it. Mistar, I demand an explanation. Alright. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proved it yourself with this photograph. Huh? What's, what's Edgeworth doing here? B but there can't be. Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations. Perhaps you finally found your true calling in life. Hmm, harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my object? What, what, what was my objection? Chop liver? But it was there. A scarf. No, not that, but, but something red. Really? Well, now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? Very well, with this, continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Okay. Tell us about that. All the dots. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. 
Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. Most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. Apprehending the suspect. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. Music's got a bit faster. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah, yes, when I, how did you run to her? There's a metal grate in between you. Alright, I guess we're going to be pressing her on that, aren't we? Ah, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. Why would she do that? That's why, what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Why, why would she say what? What? The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. We are the Borg. Well, that, that, what was it, second statement was completely off. Uh, you are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. Sting like a bee, that's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. An oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rawr. Yes, rawr. Very well, Mr. Ride, your cross-examination, if you will. Apprehending the suspect. Oh, straight in there like, like the second one. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. No qualms with that. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. How did you get there? You say, quickly, were you close to the subject? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. This was the metal thing between you, the partition. Hmm, maybe I should press her for more details. Yes, 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 yes. I'd like to see this on the floor plans, just to be safe. The lunch land car was... She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B block. So you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Yes, that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Over? Amazing. The coffer queen lunch lady athlete, indeed. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high, too. So how did Miss Skye not get away? Ah, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. No, 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 you're not getting away from that one. She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remembered exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just that one word. So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else. Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Uh huh. Her -huh. phone? She can't mean. Well, we've got to ask further. By phone, do you mean. This cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately. My memory. It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No, the court doesn't see, Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. In the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone. Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm, good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rocky defense attorney. Lana's cell phone updated in the court record. Alright then. I saw it all. How she tried the phone on the wall, but I had to use her cell instead. 
Go on then. Um, I think you could restate your testimony for the court. Aha! Uh -huh. I was going to ask the same thing. Let me say this one time, so listen close, Ruckies. Alright. Chief Prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. And she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. And during the time, you climbed over the chain link fence. Then when I boldly grabbed her arm, the Chief Prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this? What is it, Mr. Wright? I'm just thinking the location where she dropped it doesn't actually look like where she dropped it. Doesn't... It, it, it doesn't make sense. Hmm... So this guy tried to run. Sorry, my sister is so suspicious, Mr. Wright. Not as sorry as I am. But she didn't do it. You have to believe me. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. How can I prove that the, like, the location of where like the, uh, the phone is, like where it was found, was not in the right location? D I don't... Hmm. Hmm. So... Hmm. I don't know... I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Oh yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. I saw it all, how she tried the phone on the wall. Oh, wait, 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 wait. From where you told us you were, you couldn't have seen her trying to use the phone on the wall because of the partition. Right? That's the only thing that makes sense there. Like, she couldn't have seen it from where she said she was. So, can I prove that? of anything. Is it that? Yeah, so can I have like a marker here? No. Right, so if you look at that, she was standing in the, in the open spot in the top right, and she's saying she could have seen her on the telephone, but there's a partition wall in the way. She wouldn't have been able to see her. Right? Go with that. Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You, who together with the chief prosecutor kicked me out two years ago. Well, that was where, because you were wearing Jelly Donald hats. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. Ahem. Let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true... You couldn't possibly have seen Miss Skye making that phone call. I believe you... See what I'm getting at? The emergency phone was on the back side of the partition. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it. What? Oh, I couldn't have seen it. Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch, she's coughing up lies. Overruled. What? That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? That is exactly what lie this witness has told to the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about... Um... Hmm. Oh, she, she could be telling the truth about that. The order of events... I'm thinking it's that one. Because it's like, if she was at a different angle or she was on the other side of the fence, she could have easily seen where she, like, using the phone and stuff like that. So I don't think she's lying. It's just she didn't realize from a different perspective she wouldn't have seen that. So. Miss Sky tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. 
What is, the, what is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie, I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. Overruled. A different location? Well, that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? It'd have to be 30 feet away, wouldn't it? So, all the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. The place from where Miss Star witnessed this crime was here. So it's like... I can't... Hmm, it's, I'm guessing it's going to be the security room because it's the only thing that's like... Out of reach. I'm trying to think like... Distance. Like, because the security room, you had to come down through a door, right? So it's like, if she's 30 feet away, that would add up. So it's like, duh, 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 would be equivalent to, when she was here, just, duh. Right? It's gonna be about equivalent. Yeah? I... It's the only thing that makes sense. It's the only other place that's labelled, so... Take that. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm, so she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in A Block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. I remember in your testimony you said you brought a lunch to your boyf your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Oh, I forgot about that detail. I would have gone with that. Well, Miss Star? How many years have I been getting the better of men? To think that the tables could be turned. Ah, oh, the turn tables. Today a man has got the better of Angel Star. Oh, what's happened here? Oh, da. Or da, witness? What have you done? You used to be a detective, you should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished, and I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Sky? Uh, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make any sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. Wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. Hmm. Hmm. So who took this photo? Right, wait, 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 wait. Here's the question. The, the, I'm leaning back in my chair, so the, like the volume levels of my microphone may be a bit different. If, if, if she was in the security guard station, how, how did she take this picture? Because the chain link fence is right there. You can see it in the picture. So who took the picture? Right? Who took the picture? So this photograph tells all it was the defendant who stabbed the victim. But who took the picture? That truth still stands. It still stands. I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? Me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B-Block. It must make a vital difference, but... What? What would change? Mm, the angle... Uh, yeah, we know that, because we've already gone through that. The distance to the crime... To the crime, yes. Because I was thinking the phone, wasn't I? So to the crime, yes. The difference in lighting is not really... It's not really relevant at all. So distance to crime. 
change the distance between her and the scene of the crime. Objection! My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. Yes, but you still have to go down the stairs, you fool. I don't see how that would change what she could see. Objection! What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you were arrested, Miss Skye? Well, witness, you... Yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? The quality of my lunches has gone from low to inedible. I was bringing a PB&J lunch with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass walled station. Yeah, there we go. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked and I couldn't open it. Huh? Ah, so this is all right. This is how she gets the picture. Also, why was the door locked? That's why I had to go through the visitor park in B block. That's quite a detour. That explains the light. The picture still being correct. All right. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. For five minutes? <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> hmm. This changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point. And uh, the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely! Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? We'll go, yes. Objection. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You could make pasta in that amount of time, if you like it al dente. I've got lunch boxes that, that tie pasta into knots, Rocky. A five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange. If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey! Don't get me the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run. But this time was different. The sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Yes. Yar! Oh, that's a yard. Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it. We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright. That was too close. Me thinks it's not done, because that's not how these things work. Because at this point, it would be like, right, back to investigating. But mm, there's going to be someone coming and being like, no objection. So it's, it's, it's getting one of those things where it's like, I don't trust it. I'm afraid that the cough of queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Is it coming? Is it coming? It was a hold it. It was a hold it. From you? Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to foist off on me. I prefer not to take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. W what was that? Yeah, what was that? What do you mean you have evidence? Is this another one of her trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Uh. 
Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Whoa, triple decker! Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the lunch land motto says, you won't be disappointed. What's she going to pull out of a lunchbox this time? Decisive evidence. What decisive evidence? I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now... What the? It's in the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on the shoe. One was, of course, the victim's. And the other blood type matched that of our defendant, Miss Lana Sky. The shoe proves it. It's flawless. Decisive evidence. What? There was blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all of your lunch and decisive evidence needs. I like lunch, yeah. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple. As I've already said, I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention it? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know that the two rules of evidence law are... Rule number one! No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a defe defective. Yep. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. Could at least study some evidence law, really. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another court against count against you witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Okay, victim shoe. White enamel shoe bears traces of blood from Goodman and Lana Sky, but who's to say it's their shoe? Like, what? how do you know it is their shoe? That could be just a shoe that you've put blood on. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Like, do we have the other shoe? That'd be my question. Where's the other shoe? I should have mentioned these five minutes, but th those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. Okay. Now, to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? I'm going to present the shoe at this point. Let's see here. Objection! This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are the evidence in that statement just now related? They aren't, are they? No, not at all. Mr. Wright, please think the facts over before making accusations. I don't think that wouldn't be any points with the judge. And now to the matter of the victim's shoe, did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on the shoe, one was of course the victim's, and the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. See, I can't dispute that. The shoe proves it, it's flawless, decisive evidence. I guess I'll press this, because the, the shoe, I don't know how the shoe proves it, it could be, it's just a shoe, we've not got enough evidence as to where the shoe came from. I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like your client. She's in enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't you have a problem with this shoe? A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? The surprise. Oh, it's the victim's shoe. I've not taken that in. I, I, it's, it's in my head. I was thinking it was um, Lana Sky's shoe. I don't know how I thought that. But anyway. Yeah, so victim's shoe. So, like, you stole evidence from the crime scene. No one should do that. 
Ever. Uh huh. I will just go with as a problem, though. But I'm not imagining things. I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, Rocky. I give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is the contradiction about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this evidence. Ah, uh, Didn't expect this to come up. Um... I don't know. It's got a yellow thing on it, right? Oh no, I meant to be pointing out like wh where it where it is. So okay. Hmm. So right foot stabbed stabbed in the back. So when it be like why why is why is there blood on the side? Just trying to think like right stabbed in the back. Okay. So if you're stabbed in the back, and this is your right foot. Blood might appear there. I don't know. It's got to be some of the blood, because what? Otherwise, it's just a shoe, isn't it? So I don't know. Hmm. Just trying to think. Like, it's right. Scene of the crime. So, right foot. You get stabbed in the back. Blood could somehow feasibly splatter there. Somehow, like, like, it's like, lean forward and back and stuff like that. One, like, ah, retching around and stuff. Then, my question is, how does it get here? How does it end up there? Hmm, because it been splashed on the splash pattern would be there as well. So, I'm assuming. I wonder if you noticed there's blood on the bottom of this shoe. Don't mess with me, Rocky. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Mm, indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense the victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of his shoe? So do we have a picture of his shoes? That's my question. We've only got one picture. He was stabbed in the back, wasn't he? So we've only got one picture, which is this. Let's have a look. I'm trying to just try and get some evidence from it somewhere. So that's after the crime was committed. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. There's not enough blood splatter? Because it's like, if we look at the blood pattern on his coat, it's like it would be dripping down. That would make sense why it drips onto his shoe, but. Oh no! The problem lies in the footprint. But it could just been lying in a pool of blood in the back of the car. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why would any bloody footprints... Oh, no need to swear. Bloody footprints by the scene of the crime. Aha! That's not what I was thinking at all. Just... <laughs> it's generally like... It's the only thing I've got where it like might be relevant. As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about this shoe. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. Like, they could have been there. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Oh, no footprints. No, no, no. Order. Order. Order? Well, witness? What? Huh? I, uh... Great going, Mr. Wright, but... It's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction. Then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh, that's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think. 
I don't know. I, I don't know why they, it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? So this was a shot in the dark, really. I see. Now I get it. Get what? A witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but his efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Row. Row. I thought that was a strange thing for a normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that, hmm. I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently, you have not the slowest conveyor belt. What? You're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. What a strange analogy. Witness, well, was this oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. Oh, so it would have washed away anything on the floor. Water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright. Uh, do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! Uh -huh. You don't mean... Yes, the suspect knocked over the oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would ever become evidence against her. What? Oh, there's water, yeah. That ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left on the victim's shoe tie her quite clearly to this murder. Yeah, I've got something up my sleeve, just you wait. Then, after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's speciality. Erasing evidence. That reminds me, this guy's right hand was hurt. And she say she had cut herself when she stabbed him. So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe? Well, I see no other reason to prolong this trial. Mr. Wright, do something, please. What? What can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime and she tried to conceal it. But... Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution's side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Objection. There we go. Little girl. What did you just say? Oh. Huh? M me? Did you just say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? Well, yeah, you are. The same my sister hid evidence by raising the bloody footprints. Well... I thought you had your fill, but you are demanding a second helping. What? Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called Evidence. Wait, we just don't tell me you have something else. Objection! The time for deliberations is past. Any future comments, and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare the cough-up queen. Look at this! A photograph? Oh, well, th th that would have helped a while ago. I did, just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. That's what I was going for. Hmm, I see no room for error in this evidence. Mr. Wright, wait, look at the asphalt in this. Hey, it's clearly wet. Raising the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. This is pretty damning. I I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I I couldn't help after all. This go this washes away. Sort of my idea. Just sort of like, because I had in my head just thinking like the phone was on the floor. If the phone was on the floor, the electronics would be shot. We wouldn't have been able to ring Emma's phone. But there clearly was water on the floor, so... It's not your fault. 
I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. I'm sorry, Mia. Right, wet or not? Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up off of the asphalt, take another good look. Don't give up. No, not until the better end. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well, this time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Objection! There we go. Your Honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? There it is. Can I... can it wait? N no, it can't. Then it'll be too late. Look at this photograph. The last one submitted. This trial isn't over. Until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So, right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? I've just noticed the time of this video. It's like, I would end this in the past, but it's like, I, I feel like we need to get to the end of this section first. Yeah, I'll think later. Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem in this photograph. Um, the water... What is this in here, though? That's my question. The problem in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Oh, muffler, muffler, yes! Wait a moment, just wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, we just said muffler. Have I seen no trace of a muffler or a scarf or any kind in this photograph? A muffler is also part of a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system, a pipe. I see, and I see. What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hmm. So what if there is something sticking out of the muffler? Uh, Lana was just trying to blow up his car. Like, make it, like, go bad, not try and kill him, blow up. What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Objection! Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. What? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth in the muffler is related to this case. Um, I don't know. The only thing I can think of is... There we go. Miss Star, recall your testimony from the court. For the court. Ah, yes. When I was arrested, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in the early testimony. Muffler. Ah, oh, yar. Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means the piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh and such. Is that it? What happened? Well, it seems we'll have to suspend the proceedings. S suspend? I find myself wondering about the piece of cloth. If we leave any questions unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Phew. That was close. But... We've made it, at least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. He's still hungry? Ah, there we go. That's a lovely place to end this part. I thought we were going to go into another investigation after 
this bit. But all right, so we'll see you in the next part with the other part of the trial, I guess. So, ta-ta for now.